Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for welcoming me also through the Travel Econ program. I feel uh, very lucky to be here to present you uh, this, uh, this movement that is uh, starting in French Polynesia. So um, before um, talking too much, please excuse my English or any awkward expression I might say. It's not on purpose at all. <laughs> so um, yeah. So this is it. Let's start about it. Um, yeah, just a bit of uh, context about French Polynesia. We are in the middle of the Pacific. I guess you know approximately about that. We are just five hours away from uh, New Zealand, so you can come visit us if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, the interesting thing about it, um, I just realized uh, during the presentation, but uh, our area uh, is uh, as big as Europe. In French Polynesia, we are used to say that, but actually we are in the Pacific, so it's as big uh, as Australia, maybe, or half as big as Australia. So um, it's a very big ter territory, a lot of seas, very difficult to manage, and uh, 118 islands, so uh, very spread, and many people, and not so many people actually, but uh, yeah, people in very different uh, areas. So um, we are 280,000 people. So uh, it was funny to see that Wellington is uh, near 400,000. So another territory as big as Europe, you, uh, you've got uh, less than Wellington city uh, population. So interesting. And we are 170,000 uh, in Tahiti. So I live in Tahiti, and our community is more in Tahiti for now. But of course, we want that to spread, and people get uh, take uh, take the map and uh, do do whatever they want uh, everywhere in uh, French Polynesia. So um, there is also some uh, context about uh, the um, the the working place there. So there is a lot of uh, unemployed people that that are under thirty. So we've got a big issue about education there. There's no proper high school. People need to leave French Polynesia to do uh, studies. So people don't have the money. So people don't get the, the job and, uh, and so on. So it's a, it's a kind of a problem. And uh, the other problem is about the internet connection. We have a very poor internet connection. So there is some cable coming uh, to French Polynesia, there is already one, but uh, it's not uh, usable for now. <laughs> so it's too too expensive actually to use it. So and we are too few for this one cable. So they are adding uh, other cable going through uh, other islands. So maybe sometime we can use it. But uh, it's very uh, difficult to have an internet connection, which explains why we are not so m so many to do uh, open street map for now. And yeah, this is it. Um, yeah, for the context. And uh, yeah, uh, just a few words how geography uh, works there. Um, we've got uh, the Urbanism Service, which does the job of uh, National Geographical Institute. So French Polynesia is French. So uh, this is why it's uh, Urbanism Service doing that. Um, yeah, and we've got um, Tefenua is a governmental portal. Uh, it's a geo, um, geographical portal where you can find the, the data and the maps. So um, about that, uh, this geographical portal is maintained by uh, the government. And uh, yeah, it's not super... Um, flexible to use. There is like, uh, you can have a web service, but you cannot use this web service into GIS. So it's a bit li limited for now. But the government is uh, under op an open data um, strategy. And uh, they should be uh, sharing their data by the end of the year. So on, a, on an open data platform. So let's hope it will be that in reality. But uh, yeah, this is it for the geographical context, I think. So, sorry for the picture. 
But this is uh, about uh, of our community, so we are not so much um, <laughs> for now. But we started to do a regular meeting uh, like since uh, August. So uh, and. Uh, at the last one, we were more than that. So it's good that people are coming to our meetings uh, more and more. And we did a conference um, last month. So people get uh, aware about this system. And uh, yeah, there is a lot of different people on this picture. I, I want to explain you a bit of their background. So the guy on the left is um, from a foundation that acts against exclusion. So you will see a bit later, we show uh, some activity we did with them. So it's really good to ha have uh, him with us because he works with um, yeah, uh, people being excluded from uh, the working place and everything. And uh, two other ones are open source uh, developers. So they are very uh, into developing stuff and very supportive if we need to to build a new map for French Polynesia, like a map with the stuff that interests uh, more Polynesian people. And the guy in the middle is, a f is from the French uh, WSM community, so he brings a project about uh, disaster risk reduction, well, more about early warning system based on open street map and, and some uh, cool stuff on Raspberry everything. So we will do uh, an experimentation on March uh, in an atoll of several atolls of French Polynesia. So it's going to be fun, I think. So this is more about the activities we have been doing. Uh, so we've started, actually, the community started with some mapping parties about accessibility. Um, Tahiti is pretty small. French Polynesia is not, in terms of people, is small. And uh, communication goes super well. So we did this mapping party. And uh, Rowena, which is a friend of mine, actually, she's uh, on the wheelchair. She's a great uh, communicant. So she, um, she shared that some uh, interesting uh, accessible points. Like here, it's a uh, table, accessible table. And yeah, I was very surprised to see that uh, 250 person like that. And, we are not so so numerous, but uh, there is an uh, active community um, here, uh, there, more. So uh, this is it. And we did some uh, field papers, but it didn't work very well because Rowena didn't really like maps. But uh, it doesn't matter. We, we did uh, a bit of mapping still. And uh, yeah, it was very interesting. In fact, this project started because Rowena wanted to um, share the accessible spot of the city because Papeete, uh, the, the capital city of uh, Tahiti, is uh, not uh, accessible at all, uh, almost. But there is still some good place to, to notice. So, so this is how this mapping party started. So this is um, this is uh, also an activity we've been doing in the frame of this project about mapping accessibility for disabled people. Um, here it's with uh, the people from uh, the foundation that acts against exclusion. So uh, just a little story about that. Uh, here it's Brenda. Brenda, uh, we went to map the accessibility around the, the place we were. And uh, Brenda didn't want to write anything or draw anything because she says, uh, I'm not good at writing. Uh, almost I don't know how to write. But uh, then it was very funny because she explained her um, friends how to map. So uh, on an on idea, idea editor on openstreetmap.org. So um, it was a um, kind of success story for FAST because they, they show and they could prove that uh, digital cannot be exclusive if you, you find a good way to get into it. So it was a, a very good moment. So and, uh, to finish the story, uh, FAST uh, help us with this accessibility mapping project and give us uh, like uh, five person uh, to map it for one year, one day a week. So. To map uh, accessibility, sorry. So um, that will be very interesting. Uh, 
And yeah, it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to start that uh, very soon. And uh, yeah, this is uh, something global about France, French legislation. So uh, since this year, um, teenagers have to learn OSM at school. So it's a bit crazy, I think. <laughs> For me, I was, wow, they did it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now at school, you, you, have, uh, you are 15 years old, and you, you are compelled to follow a course on OpenStreetMap. It's five, uh, well, it's some, um, uh, how to say it? It's some practice stuff. So it's on a practice uh, uh, program. It just lasts five weeks. And in these five weeks, teachers can choose between OpenStreetMap or something else. But I've met a few teachers in Tahiti. They wanted to work on accessibility. So <laughs> this is awesome. So I'm very happy about that. And uh, yeah, this is it. And here, um, I'm talking about the government uh, process on OpenStreetMap in, in Tahiti and French Polynesia. So uh, here is the evolution of the um, yeah, strategy of a urbanism service. So um, uh, at the start, well, at the start and until 2017, the, the database, uh, geo database of uh, French Polynesia was split on, between, uh, on several geo databases one per island, so it was a bit uh, hard to um, yeah to share this data this way. So in 2018, they uh, they unified their database and all those databases into one, and um, and shared their data on under Creative Commons uh, license. So you could go there with your USB key and ask for the data. So no one did that because it was uh, not known. It was on a low somewhere, somewhere. So um, I was lucky enough to know someone who know that. So I knew that. So I went there and I uh, spoke about OpenStreetMap and they say, uh, like six, six months later, they asked me, um, oh, no, maybe we could put our data into OpenStreetMap. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so now actually uh, this day I'm working on putting their data into OpenStreetMap, and um, uh, so for Tahiti it's a big improvement. Um, like uh, this is a urban area of Tahiti, so we added I added a lot of buildings and stuff, but. This is just for the picture. So, but why uh, is the uh, urbanism service sharing their data? So, first thing is that they have to share their data. So it's a way among others. Um, they, are, they are aware that data on OSM is more used than data on a governmental geo portal. That is not, uh, you can just see the data, but not uh, um, exploit it. So um, they also want to uh, support tourism industry, so sharing some touristic places. Um, they also want to facilitate the route calculation. Like um, for now, the, um, the geo portal allows that, but uh, it's, it's not super open. Everything, uh, you don't know how the calculation is done. And uh, it's pretty limited, but yeah, so I want to facilitate that. Um, encourage a local GIS community because uh, I didn't say that, but uh, there is a university that uh, teach uh, geography as, at the university. So you've got two years after your bachelor. I'm not sure this is the best term. Um, yeah, after 18 years old. Um, you've got uh, three years of uh, university and m in geography, and many of the students go back uh, at the supermarket after that. So they would like to to ease um, workforce um, this way. And uh, OpenStreetMap can be used to improve the urbanism service database. So it's, well, it's uh, one of the. Um, um, of the good points, 
And uh, OpenStreetMap showed also a lot of uh, way to improve their database. So it was a uh, interesting work for them to do. So um, yeah, what's next in French Polynesia or about the open data portal? Um, yeah, they also want to to ease the process of uh, exchanging an information to OpenStreetMap, take back on information. It's an ongoing work. So this is it. So I'm going to be super fast about Carto Mobility Pro Project. is a project about mapping accessibility uh, for disabled at the start. And uh, with disabled, as you, you could see in the previous uh, picture, um, yeah, so there is a stage of mapping, uh, collecting data. There is the stage of proposing a statistic analysis, doing some uh, analysis on the data to, to be able to find solution and, yeah, improve the, the city. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is it, uh, propose uh, prioritization actions, uh, yeah. And, yeah, uh, uh, um, parallel part of it is uh, to facilitate contribution into OpenStreetMap. Uh, through mapping parties, but also through tools. So, yeah. And we are doing um, some trainings uh, in two weeks with this uh, federation called uh, Tenu Otehuma. They are, um, it's a federation which gathers associations who works for disabled people. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a bit crazy how... Um, I think in uh, Tahiti, everybody uh, comes together to to move on and do make things work on a specific project. I was pretty surprised of all this diversity of people coming together to make it work. So um, I feel very lucky uh, to be into this uh, dynamic. And uh, yeah, I'm very hopeful that um, we don't say between... Um, like uh, lucky ones, like uh, white ones sometimes. And I really hope uh, it will be really um, uh, taken by the people and the maps don't stay in the, the um, governmental hands. And I think uh, there, there is a lot to win to share the, the thoughts, the decisions, and yeah, involve more the population. So. That's a bit of our, um, the way we go. So this is it. Uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Sorry for my English. Thank you, Violine. Um, are there any questions? We have a bit of time for questions. Sure. So um, I'm interested in this authoritative versus, versus community gather data. So I, to me, like the government could collect where buildings and streets are <clears throat> and it'd be good if, um, and to me, it, the open street map community accessibility makes a lot of sense, things like that. Do you, I don't know, just more a comment. Do you see this separate, should, should this separation, should we get government mm -hmm. to put the buildings and the streets in open street map and get the community to do, you know, uh, community markets, community um, gardens and things like that. So you, you are, um, I'm not sure I understand quite. I just, well. I just a, yeah. a comment about this difference between authoritative data mm. and community data. Do you see a distinction or the need for a distinction? Well, I, I think the, where the community comes is where there is a lack of data. So um, accessibility is not, uh, it's a problem people gave up for years. So it's something the community wants to, well, people want, are fed up with that. <laughs> like you see people from the island someday, uh, I see, um, I'm saying from the island is from far away from Tahiti, uh, other island than Tahiti. Some days there was a big street, there is a walking uh, passage, one way of the street, they go on the central uh, stuff. <laughs> No walking passage the other way. They were stuck uh, between two way of uh, well, uh, rapid um, way of uh, circulation, and you see that you say, oh. 
why is it this way? <laughs> we, we need to do something, and maybe the government doesn't give up on that, and they are not able maybe to to work on this. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi. I was just wondering the is it the SAU, the authority with the data? Um, you had the timeline showing when they released it. Yeah. No, it's not me. No, no. Um, mm. Did they just release it of their own volition, or was that you guys requesting? the data to be released under that license? Okay. So I wasn't there when they did that, right. but uh, the the guy who did that are already open source, open data oriented. So I think uh, they were wise enough to do it by the, themselves. Yeah. And is anybody from that organization involved with um, OpenStreetMap? Uh, mm. French Polynesia? I would love. <laughs> <laughs> they came at one event, but I think more to see and yeah, get the temperature of the thing. But uh, yeah, the guy is uh, has a family and doesn't have time to come at evening parties. Oh. Maybe someday he will, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's not very much involved. But at least he's uh, politically involved in two open street map, which is a good point. Thank you, Belen. Uh, thank you for the social and technical work. It's a lot of work that you did, and I really admire what you what you did to uh, with the friends and with the community. That's amazing. My question is, uh, based on your experience and expertise, what do you think are the motivations by the local communities when they participate in OpenStreetMap? What do you think are the best motivators for people to show up and, and start and continue? Excellent question. <laughs> so for now, we don't have uh, yet. Uh, well, my dream is to, is to have a mixed uh, population at this event. For now, we are all uh, employed or auto-employed, and uh, yeah, the, for some, it's uh, making moves, the sharing um, philosophy. Um, well, French Polynesia is quite uh, good at sharing, but um, it's a bit weird. There is. Uh, yeah, maybe a business thing uh, that makes, uh, if you do open data, you are stupid because you won't uh, earn money. There is a, a big thing about money <laughs> in Tahiti. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a way also to make uh, mentalities change, I think, for people to get involved into this. And maybe for some other to find some jobs because it's, yeah, it's a small world. And so there is some people that know everybody in Tahiti, so. It can help find finding jobs or so. For now, is that? Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. And thank we you. have a gift for you. Oh. Uh, for presenting. Oh. So thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you. you.